Hello guys, I am Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and wow, there is a lot happening in the makerspace right now. A lot going on with these embedded microcontrollers and what we're going to do today is we're going to look at some hot off the press items and kind of do a side by side comparison. You've seen my earlier reviews when we sort of look at the Raspberry Pi, the Beagle Bone Black, the Arduino, the different versions of Arduino, different version of all these things and try to kind of sort it it all out but there's there's kind of a really unique part of the parameter space and that is very small embedded microcontrollers that can run Linux and there's been some recent developments and so I'm going to do a head-to-head -head comparison today of two of the new releases in this space right here we have the Raspberry Pi Zero just released yesterday the model W and this is a Raspberry Pi Zero with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And then this is the Omega, the Onion Omega 2 Plus, and it also has onboard Wi-Fi. Bluetooth is available with a little plug-in module, and uh, these two are sort of uh, very similar. And one of the things that you realize if you've been following my videos is there's just a huge number of different uh, platforms that we can work on. And really, we want to kind of pick and choose carefully. We want to have uh, start building our projects around certain core uh, platforms and that way we can get our components put together we can develop our expertise and it's just like I can't be an expert in every single new uh, microprocessor or microcontroller that comes out so I've got to kind of choose and so right now I am looking at having to choose between the Raspberry Pi Zero and the Omega 2 uh, the Onion Omega 2 Plus and so let's do a side-by-side -side comparison and see you know kind of how these things stack up again against each other. And what I have done is uh, I've had a chance to play around with these and I'd like to just sort of summarize what I've found and kind of present with you as a side-by-side -side comparison kind of help us to choose as I'm moving forward with tutorials and and, and more projects. Uh, again, my interest is, is the ability to make a cool little something that you could put in a little case and put in your pocket that would do things neat. You know, something that you could walk around with. Portability, uh, uh, concealability, compactability, those types of applications is what I'm, uh, I'm interested in. So let's look at the Raspberry Pi Zero. If we look at the size rather than just uh, you know writing down the size, let's just look at the size. If we look at the size, the Omega 2 Onion, uh, the Onion Omega 2 Plus is a little bit smaller than the Raspberry Pi. They're both about the same size, but if we were going to have to base things on size, the uh, Onion Omega 2 Plus is a little bit smaller. Okay, for me, price is not such a big deal because if I'm working on prototypes and I'm working on projects, I really don't care about the difference between $5 and $10 and $15. When you go to make a product, that's a really big deal, but as sort of a maker who likes to do prototypes and cool projects, I'm not so worried about price. Well, on the price, what you can see is, is that the Raspberry Pi Zero and the Omega Onion Omega 2 Plus are both listed at $10, so it's sort of a toss-up. On size, uh, the onion wins on price. It's it's a, it's a toss up. Let's look at the CPU power. The CPU on the Raspberry Pi Zero uh, uh, Model W is listed as one gigahertz, and the speed of the Onion Omega Two processor is listed at 580 megahertz. So while the Raspberry Pi Zero is faster, I list that as a toss up. That is not going to be a deciding factor for me because when I do an embedded pro uh, an embedded project or product. I'm not trying to calculate pi to a million decimal point, points. I'm just trying to kind of control things. And so as far as benefit to the user, I don't really view the 1 gigahertz versus the 580 megahertz as, as, as a benefit to me in an embedded application. You guys chime in if I'm wrong. If you need that more processing power, leave some comments below. I mean, I'm not trying to tell you I have the answers. I'm just sort of saying how I look at it. I read all the comments. I enjoy all the comments. Let me know what you think uh, down here. But I'm going to give that a toss-up. So size, the onion wins, price, CB, CPU, it's a toss-up. Okay, onboard storage. The Raspberry Pi Zero has 512 megabytes. The Onion Omega 2 Plus has 32 megabytes. Man, for me, this is a big deal. And to go from 512 to 32 
that impacts what I can do. That impacts how many Python, the version of Python I can run, the version of Linux that I can run, the libraries that I can download on the system, the power that I can achieve as a user. Really, this difference in memory matters. Okay, so uh, to me, this is a clear win for the Raspberry Pi Zero. I do, like I say, I do have uh, one of these Onion uh, Omega 2 Pluses, and I spent a weekend playing around with it, and so I do have some experience with that, and what I did find is, is the thing that, things that I was playing with, I was beginning to be impacted by this 32 megabytes of uh, memory. Uh, I am not a Linux expert, but the Linux that comes on uh, the Onion 2 was not something that I was familiar with, and just sort of like, uh, you you know, kind of working with Linux over the years, things that I would do like sudo reboot or something didn't seem to recognize sudo. Different things that I was doing and familiar with uh, were, were, it was as if, uh, it seemed to me as if there was sort of a uh, skinny, uh, skinny down version of Linux that seemed to be uh, that seemed to come with the uh, with the Onion Omega 2. So things that I was familiar with, I wasn't able to do, and so I just like you know I like the Raspberry Pi, the more memory, the more familiar version of Linux to me. Okay, USB is going to be a toss up. Uh, they both have uh, USB capability, micro SD features. Both of them have a slot for a micro SD card. And then the really, really, really big issue is they both have Wi-Fi because that was my gripe about the original Raspberry Pi Zero is no Wi-Fi meant that it wasn't useful for me. Right now it does have onboard Wi-Fi, okay? And uh, that's, uh, that's true for both of them. Uh, one of the things that the Raspberry Pi Zero has is it has a slot for a camera module where you can slip a, uh, a ribbon cable in that connects to the standard Raspberry Pi camera. And to me, that is a really, really big deal because if I combine a camera module, uh, you know, the little slot to plug the, the camera cable into, and I combine that with Wi-Fi, all of a sudden the idea of uh, embedded IP cameras just there's just endless possibilities so for me that is a really big deal so I'm going to give green to the Raspberry Pi as the winner and green on storage to the Raspberry Pi. <coughs> uh, on Bluetooth the Raspberry Pi Zero Model W has Bluetooth on board the Onion Omega 2 Plus you have to buy a little dongle and plug it in to get Bluetooth but I gave that a toss-up because I really don't like Bluetooth. I have not had luck with Bluetooth. It seems like to me, just you know, you guys comment, give me your opinion, but for me I've never really gotten Bluetooth to work very well. It's like I can never rely on it to connect right or to do what I expect it to. So I consider this to be a toss-up. The fact that the Raspberry Pi uh, Model Zero uh, Raspberry Pi Zero Model W has uh, Bluetooth built in. That doesn't really do me any good. Okay. Now there's two sort of uh, intangibles that I have here, and on usability, I give the Raspberry Pi Z, uh, Zero Model W green over the Omega, Onion Omega 2 Plus. Like I say, I played with the Onion Omega 2 Plus uh, over a weekend. I invested a very large amount of time in it. I had a lot of trouble getting it booted up. Okay, I had a lot of trouble getting connected to it. And that's a little bit unfair because this thing is just coming off the Kickstarter campaign. I got it, but man, you know, Maybe what I should say there is not quite ready for prime time because in following the, there were different instruction sets on how to do it on different places on the uh, Omega website and the main approach that was described, I just could not establish communication with it. Finally, when I did establish communication with it, uh, there were a couple of things on the Omega 2 I was disappointed with. I was disappointed with the sort of slimmed down version of, of, of Linux. Call me lazy. I don't want to have to go learn, uh, uh, you know, uh, l learn a lot new there. The other thing is it was suggesting that you download a light version of Python. When I downloaded the light version of Python, things that I would really like to do, I could not do in that version of Python. Probably gets back to this small amount of, uh, small amount of memory here. 
And uh, the other thing that I didn't like about it, again, I'm just coming at it as a non-expert. So am I a Linux uh, embedded expert? No. But as far as a general maker, if you look at my tutorials, I probably know more and more adept than most people out there in the makerspace. I'm not, not saying that to brag, but I'm just saying, I mean, this is what I do. This is what I'm into. And I get things and I learn them and I do them. And what I'm saying is I, I was having trouble with the Onion Omega 2 Plus. One of the things I didn't like is, is that with the Raspberry Pi family, when you get uh, Wi-Fi or you connect to a network, it like it has an IP address, it connects to your network, or your network can give it an IP address, and then from any computer on your network, you can interact with it by that IP address. The thing about the Onion 2 Plus, and maybe if you were smarter than I was, you could reconfigure it to do something, but it wants to become its own like wireless hub. And so if I want to, con it doesn't connect to my network. It becomes like a network, and then you have to go connect to it. And, and like that's not the way the world works. You know, I've got my network, I've got all my components, I've got my computers. You kind of play in my ballpark. I don't want to have to go play in your ballpark. And again, if somebody were an expert on these things, they could probably figure out how to use Linux to reconfigure the Onion Omega to play more nicely on the network. But as far as spending 20 hours, 24 hours over the couple, course of a couple of days, I could not get the thing working the way I wanted to it. So on usability, I'm going to have to give it to the Raspberry Pi Zero W because it fits into the context of all the things that I'd done on the Arduino, all the things I'd done with Arduino and Python, all the things I'd done in Python, all the things I'd known about Linux. Just the usability seems to be a lot easier with the Raspberry Pi Zero and uh, Model W. Then also on the user base, because the Raspberry Pi Zero is pretty much like a trimmed down, a slimmed down version of the Raspberry Pi Model 3 and the earlier ones, all the learning that you did, all the projects that you did on that are going to migrate over to this smaller form factor. And hence, you have an enormous user base compared to the Onion Omega 2 Plus. So I will admit that I was extremely excited when the Onion Omega 2 Plus came out. I got a box of components and was able to play with it. Yeah, it's a good platform. I think it's got a lot of things going for it. But me, as a guy who makes videos and tutorials and try to, uh, tries to really go in and learn something, when it comes between making a decision of how I'm going to move forward, I will be moving forward with the uh, Raspberry Pi Zero Model W. Okay, I've been very, very impressed with this. Right now, they're hard to get, but the Omega's hard to get too. It still seems to be, as of the making of this video, still kind of in the Kickstarter phase and the Raspberry Pi Zero you're still uh, Model W you're still limited to uh, units of one that you can order them but I'm hopeful that you know you can get one you can do your development you can play with it you can see what it's about and I'm hopeful that the day is coming where a person would be able to place an order for a thousand of these uh, uh, Raspberry Pi Zero uh, Model W so bottom line here is is that a lot of things happening in the makerspace a lot of things coming out, a lot of stuff to stay on top of as of today with what I know now, and this could change, but as of what I know now, I'm going to have to pick the Raspberry Pi Zero Model W as the winner. This is the platform that I will be moving forward with. Uh, they're real hard to get. I got one ordered, and uh, I'm very happy to be able to get this, but but as soon as I can find a more reliable supplier down uh, in the comments and in toptechboy.com, I'll give you some leads on getting these things. But for right now, uh, just look around, see if you can find maybe one to order, and then we'll be moving forward with some cool projects on this. Appreciate you guys co uh, coming in. If you like this, think about giving us a thumbs up. Think about subscribing to the channel. And man, you know, the value of this is to get your input. So leave some comments down here and let me know what you think. Paul McWhorter, toptechboy.com. We will talk to you guys later.